There are a million stories in a big city. Bethlehem, not being so big, is no exception. There are people and there are laws. And when those laws are broken, well, that's where I come in. My name's Thursday. Joe Thursday. I'm a cop. The story you're about to hear is true. The names have not been changed. That'd be silly. In fact, this is the way it is. My partner Frank and I were working late Monday night when a call came in. We had just broken up a disturbance at a local inn and we were processing a couple of perpetrators. You see, there was a census ordered of the David's lineage and the people were pouring into town like cheap wine. The overcrowding was making everybody a little nuts. So there wasn't any room left at the inn you went to and you lost your temper. That's right, that foul-smelling donkey offspring of a clerk lost my reservation! And you thought it would help your cause by hitting him over the head with a camel whip? Well, it probably wasn't the very best move at the time, but... Perhaps not. Have a seat over there, Mr. Bartholomew. I'll finish your paperwork. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a long day, Joe. Long day, Frank? It's order quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven? If it's that late, why is it so bright out? Right? You've got something there, Frank. It's almost as bright as day out there. Must be a full moon. It's not a full moon. There's a star over there. Star? You're right. That's the brightest star I've ever seen. Me too, Joe. How come we never noticed it before? Probably it's the same reason we never noticed the bright cluster of singing angels. What bright cluster of singing angels? Oh. Oh, wow. Not those angels, Frank. Not those angels either. The ones under the star, just south of the Greek fast food restaurant. Something all right, Frank. I'll say. 99 cents for a full order of baklava? How come we never noticed that restaurant before? Like I said, Frank, it's new. Well, we better check out this 4937. 4937, Joe? Celestial disturbance of a piece. We arrived at the scene of the 4937. By the time we arrived, the bright light had disappeared. There was a gathering of shepherds, where Frank and I moved in to investigate. Okay, okay, what's going on here? Wow, did you see them? See what, sir? Lights, singing, angels. There must have been hundreds of them. We had to do exactly... Slow down. All we want are the facts. Well, we were just tending our sheep when... Sheep? Yeah, sheep. We're shepherds. I don't see any sheep. Sheep! 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 I think the angels must have scared them off. Angels? I don't see any angels. No, they're gone to see the baby. The baby? Yeah, the baby king. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Lying in a manger. I don't see a baby. <laughs> no, the baby's in Bethlehem under the star. Star? I don't see a... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that star. The angels just told us that he was there. We're going to see them. Not so fast. You say these angels took your sheep? Well, not exactly. 
I think the sheep just got frightened and they ran away. And did you follow them? Well, no. If some angels started to sing to you, would you care about some sheep? You know, Frank, I think the angels created a diversion just to make off with four ton of leg of lamb. Perfect time to unload it, too, just before the holidays. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we'd really like to stay in chat, but we'd really like to go see the baby that the angels were singing about. Okay, I think we have everything we need, but don't leave town anytime too soon. We may have a few more questions. And in the meantime, we'll keep an eye out for those stolen sheep. Oh, don't worry, officers. I'm sure they'll come back home. Yeah, yeah. Wagging their tails behind them. Tell it to Mary. Mary? Never mind, Frank. There's something that bothers me about this already. Shepherds, they don't seem to care about their sheep. Well, Joe, they're obviously very excited. Just the same. These shepherds, I'm not going to let them pull the wool over my eyes. We stopped on the way to grab a couple of Peter Value meals. Frank ate them both. Good Peter. Knock on the door, Frank. Frank, you got cucumber in your teeth. Sorry, we're full. Come back in March. Not a very friendly place. I wonder how their rates are. I said we're full. Now beat it. Bethlehem PD, ma'am. We have a few questions. Police? Over a couple of towels? No towels, ma'am. We'd just like to ask you a few questions about the star. The star? What star? The star over your inn. Well, I'll be. We assume that you know nothing about the star? Well, no. Should I? Well, I suppose not, but it would make our job a whole lot easier. How so? We're looking for a baby. You too? Let me guess. Shepherds? Oh, a whole flock of them. They're out back with the lady who just had the baby. So there is a baby. Out back? Out back where? I told you we were full, have been for a week. So I told them they could stay in the stable out back. Let me get this straight. A lady shows up, she's going to have a baby, and you show her the barn? Well, we didn't have any rooms. Charming. Do you have chickens back there? Well, sure. Why? I thought you might tell her to help herself to some eggs and then charge her for bed and breakfast. Now see here. Was this woman alone? Her husband was with her. I didn't know she was going to have the baby right away. I was hoping a room would open up. Of course. Did these people say where they were from? Why, yes. Her husband said that they had come from Nazareth. Nazareth? Joe, that's more than 50 miles. In her condition? Is she all right? Well, I don't know. I haven't been back there. You what? Listen, I told you we're very busy looking after our guests. I'm sure. Listen, lady, I have half a mind to run you in on a 354. A 354? Yes, running out of stables without a license. Can we see them? I'd like to ask them a few questions. They're out back. Listen, I did what I thought was right. Well, we'll let it go this time, ma'am. But don't make it a habit. Oh, thank you, officer. Oh, I think I need one of those blue pills. Well, Frank, what do you think? Kind of gives the phrase time to hit the hay a whole new meaning, huh, Joe? Let's go, Frank. Okay, what's going on here? Shh, you'll wake the baby. Are these the parents? Who do you think they are? We even brought sheep this time. <laughs> what a guy. Oh, there he goes.
You the father? Well, yeah, kinda. I'm the husband anyways. Mary's over there. What's your name, son? Joseph of Nazareth. Can I help you officers with something? Yes. We're investigating the 4739. 4937, Joe. Whatever. An angelical disturbance outside of town. You know anything about it? No, officers. As you can see, we've been rather preoccupied tonight. Oh, by the way, congratulations. Thank you. But keep your cigars in your pocket, because this place could go up like a Roman candle. I couldn't help but notice you hesitated when we said you were when we asked if you were the father. Well, yes, it's kind of hard to explain. Try us. We're bright. Well, okay. You see, about nine months ago... Uh, hold it. Just tell us the facts, son, not the details. No, that's just it. Nine months ago, an angel appeared to me one night. An angel? There's those angels again, Joe. He didn't take any sheep from you, did he? What? No. How about mint jelly? No. No, listen, this angel appears to me one night and tells me that Mary over there is pregnant with God's baby. God's baby? Listen, pal, all we want to do is find out about the disturbance thing. What you and your girlfriend do is none of our business. That's just it. We didn't do anything. There's at least six pounds of baby over there that says differently. Yes, but God's the one that made Mary pregnant. The same angel appeared to her to tell her of God's plans as well. Let me get this straight. An angel comes to you, tells you you're going to be a father. Actually, I thought the same thing. I was going to break it off to her. The angel appeared to her first and told her about it. And you didn't? No, that's when the angel came to me and explained things. Such as? That Mary was going to give birth to the Messiah, the one that will bear all our sins. Uh-huh. So let me see if I understand. An angel comes and tells you, you're going to have a baby, and it's God's baby? That's right. You believe that? Of course. If an angel came to you, wouldn't you believe it? Not without a few questions. But I'll let you get back to your wife and baby now. I think we have all the information we need. Okay. You buy this story, Joe? Kind of tough to swallow. But he seems sincere, though. Well, one thing's for sure. What's that, Frank? The kid will never have to shut a door in his life. How's that? Well, it's simple, really. If he leaves the door open, what's his mother going to say? Were you born in a barn? He was. You're a very strange man, Frank. We headed back to the station, not saying too much about the case, because I didn't know what to make about the baby named King and that was sent from God. And another thing, I didn't want Frank to make any more stupid statements. This just in, Joe. Remember that 4937 we looked into a few months back? Seems like Herod wants to see this guy Joseph. He's got a few astrologers heading out there now to hand, hand him some gifts. Uh-huh. I don't like it. Why would Dirty Harry want to be nice to a kid with the name of Future King? What do you mean, Joe? Can I be Frank? Well, then who would I be, Joe? Uh, never mind, Frank. I mean, Dirty Harry's up to no good. I don't know, Joe. It seems like he wants to help us locate him. How are we going to do that, Frank? All we know is they're from Nazareth. Look out the window, Joe. Well, I'll be. The star's back. Yeah, and it's brighter than ever. Just like you, Frank. Grab the facts. And let's go follow the star. You want me to pull up that old file too? No, just the facts. We faxed over the necessary papers to Jerusalem Central. And then we forgot about the case. That is, until a few months later, when we got an urgent fax from the big man. King Herod, Dirty Harry we like to call him, he had a mean streak about the size of the Gaza Strip. Frank and I were back on the case. Man, Joe, I love Greek food. I wonder if they deliver. 
to keep the prices low because they don't deliver. As we neared the star, I could see that it was right over a small house just outside of Nazareth. There were some camels outside with some foreign plates. Look, Joe, the astrologers must have followed the star too. This must be the place. Must be, Frank. Go ahead and knock. You got some meat on your cheek. Yes? Bethlehem PD, ma'am. Is your husband's name Joseph? Why, yes it is. If this is about the donkey. No, ma'am. Actually, we had some questions to ask of your visitors, if you don't mind. May we come in? How did you know I had visitors? That's our job, ma'am. See, the little one's getting along nicely. Why, yes. Have you seen him before? Yes, the night he was born, in the stable. Oh, there was a lot going on that night. Understandable. Excuse me, sir. Bethlehem PD. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Is there a problem, officer? Well, that depends on the answers we get from our questions. What do you need to know? Why are you here? King Herod sent us. We're astronomers from the East. Astronomers? Ah! I'm a Pisces and my friend here is a Libra. Are we compatible? No, no. We're astronomers, not astrologers. We study the stars. Uh-huh. And why did Harry, I mean Herod, want you looking for this baby? Well, we've been studying the stars and ancient prophecies, and we believe that this is no ordinary baby. Uh-huh. How so? Well, the scriptures all point to this one being the Messiah, the one sent to save us from our unrighteousness. Ah, that would fit in with just what the kids told us back in Bethlehem. So Herod told you this? No, sir, we told him, and we came looking for the child so that we could give him gifts. What kind of gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I thought it was bad when the parents gave us clothes as a present. See if we got anything on the donkey. This kid needs something to play with. And so, what did Herod want with him? Well, he said he wanted us to tell him where the child was so that he could come and worship him. And that sounds just like Dirty Harry. So, you're heading back to tell him? Well? Well, no. We come from the east. We have no obligation to your king. And, well, we had a visit last night. A visit? Visit from who? An angel. An angel? What's that? It's a little football. Where'd you get it? I got it my hero smiley meal. Wow, what a restaurant. A Packer football. <laughs> and you said an angel sent you? That's right. Did you see any angels? No. What did the angel want? He told us not to go back to Herod, that Herod would kill the child if he knew where he was. Kill him? A baby? Not just any baby. This baby is going to be king of the Jews. Uh-huh. That sounds just like Dirty Harry. You realize we could run you in on a 2986? 2986? Failure to heed a royal edict. Or a 7321. A 7321? Transporting a controlled substance. Myrrh. Like across country borders. Or a 5396. A 5396? Double parking your camel in a loading zone. But I won't. You won't? You won't? You won't? You, you won't? I won't. Well, why not, Joe? Because, Frank, cops have dreams, too. Dreams? Yeah, dreams. Dreams of a comfortable shoe walking the beat and a meal at a fair price. Donuts and paid holidays. And last night, Frank... Yeah, Joe? I had a dream. An angel came and visited me. Which angels, Joe? Not those angels, Frank. But the angels did say Herod did want to come and kill this baby. But Joe, if you don't tell Herod where the baby is, I'll have to run you in on a 6312. 6312? Not to tell Herod where the baby is, and me 
not telling Herod myself. Yes, I know, Frank. Frank, you're a good pal. 6312 has more paperwork than any other violation. Besides, I don't want to see that baby killed either. There's another way, Frank. What's that, Joe? Joseph, you gotta take your family and get out of here. Herod's trying to kill a baby. Kill him? Why? Fear, perhaps. Who knows? Does it matter? Well, where would we go? I hear Egypt's nice this time of year. Sure, sure. That'd be great. Oh, Mary, we just wanted you to have a few gifts for the trip. This is a little bird to keep the baby quiet. And this is some diapers? Yeah. For when it gets pewy. <laughs> this is like a teddy bear, but it's not a teddy bear. I think it's extinct now. But it used to be here. And the babies. The babies get all the gifts. But I got these especially for you. Picked them up at the market this morning. And this is a cell phone. Call home. <laughs> And this, I have no idea what this is, but I thought it was attractive, so I want you to have And this is a gift. I don't know, I was just monkeying around and saw it. You can see this is a bull. Don't take nothing from nobody on the trip. <laughs> and of all these gifts we've given you, girls, look at this. Look, oh, girls. Oh, 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 she'll love we've that. We've given you everything, but oh. if you need anything else, there's always MasterCard. And that's the way it happened. That's how Jesus came into this world on my watch. A few years later, I was there when he finally did what he came here to do. But at least on that night, when the stars shone bright and the Holy Family slipped away into warm Nazareth sky, I felt good about the world somehow. And somehow, I think everything was going to turn out all right. Somehow, I think it did. Come on, Frank. Where are we going, Joe? Let's grab a bite to eat. How do you feel about lamb? You got some meat on your cheek. Yes? You got some meat on your cheek. Yes? Why, yes. Have you seen him before? Oh, no. <laughs> Dennis is gonna. <laughs> That's gonna be on. No, no, no. <laughs> that was really good to it better. <laughs> That's right. 